You said something earlier to me, and I think this is really important for people to understand. What about those individuals where something happens? What about those individuals who are on a therapy? It may be a life-saving therapy. They may have, you know, be on curative therapy if they have early stage disease, or they may have advanced cancer and they may be on what we'll call life-sustaining therapy. And then they develop a problem, whether it's heart failure or uncontrolled hypertension or some form of arrhythmia. I think this is where, you know, you really have to have a strong relationship with your cardiologist. And this is where cardio-oncology really comes to true form because our values and my mission, you know, in speaking to people is that how can we continue that therapy? If that therapy, if that cancer therapy is working for that person, I don't want to have to tell that patient, you have to stop. What I want to do is find a way that we can continue treatment for that patient. That's unbelievable because, you know, a lot of the mantras in general in the community is, you're hurting my organ, I recommend stopping it. You're right. hurting and we're like, oh, but, you know, in our organ, the cancer is very necessary. And that kind of harmony of like, hey, the risks and benefits and what can I do and what, how good it will be for you, that's cardio-oncology. So if somebody starts at the beginning and says, what is cardio-oncology? That's what it is. It's like right. like anything in life, risks, right. benefits, right. and can something be done for the side effects and how do we work together? That's amazing. And this document actually encourages that collaboration and that dialogue, right? You need an open dialogue between the two specialties. So let me just give you an example because I am now starting to see people come to me where their oncologist, perhaps in the community, doesn't feel comfortable treating them because they ex have experienced some form of cardiotoxicity. So I had a uh, actually a male breast cancer patient with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer, and he came to me because his ejection fraction had dropped. It was less than 50%, and they did not feel comfortable at his cancer center treating him. So he came to me because he obviously he needed more treatment. Without treatment, his cancer was going to progress. But there, there was that sense of uncomfortableness, you know, in terms of treating him locally. So, you know, that's where, again, we've seen the published articles. We know that, you know, when these drugs were developed, for instance, HER2 targeted therapies, that the, the clinical trials were done right with patients with you no know, normal hearts. And they were healthy. But that's not reality, is it? Right. Both, right? that we have all these people out there who may not have a perfect heart. They may not, you know, fit in to the sort of criteria that were used in the clinical trials. Right, so the should real they people, treatment? The real people, we have to treat yeah. them. So we have to learn, and that's where cardio-oncology comes in, working with our colleagues, how we can treat those people. And I should say, you know, I've talked a lot about working with cardiologists. They're one, you know, one person in the team that means working with your pharmacists, that means working with your nurses and the whole healthcare team, right? It's not just cardio, oh, yeah, cardiology yeah, yeah. oncologists, but it's a whole healthcare team. So my, you know, my vision and, uh, and my mission is to try and say, you know, as an oncologist, I want to give the best therapy for that patient. I want to give them the best chance, right, of either curing their cancer or surviving and living longer with their cancer. But I need your help to help me get through, either prevent this from happening, or if it does happen, how can I get through this? How can I get through this and maintain their cardiovascular health or make it even better?